Pico CSS is a framework that gives you a great look in site with minimal or no classes. It's only 10K and shockingly easy to use. It feels like what writing HTML should be. To show you how cool it is, let's take a look at the difference between Pico and another popular framework, Bootstrap. Let's compare how you'd build some navigation with these two frameworks. In Bootstrap, you create a nav with a class of nav bar. Now in there, you add a number of other classes to control the colors. You can also add a container. And then if you want a brand, you add it to an anchor tag with a class of nav bar brand. Then you can create a button for the toggler that collapses the navigation and makes it into a hamburger menu. Finally, the content that goes in the navigation goes in another div with a class of collapse and navbar collapse. And then you start creating a list of navigation items. Each navigation item has to have a nav item as well as a nav link. Now that seems pretty complicated for just a navigation. Let's take a look at how Pico handles navigation. Create a navigation, use the nav tag, and then you create two lists of items. The first list is the brand. It simply gets a list item. And if you want to, you can make it bold by using the strong tag. And then the other list is just a list of anchor tags with links to the different pages. You can see what the navigation looks like right here. If you want something with a logo in it, you would just create an additional list item with an SVG in it. You can see that by inspecting the navigation for the website. Another notoriously difficult component is the accordion. With Pico, all we have to do is create a details tag with some content in it. In Bootstrap, accordions are one of the toughest things to do properly because you have to include all types of classes, IDs, and even data attributes. Elements like buttons are just as simple. The basic button looks great without any classes. And if you need a button to be an inline element, you just add a roll of button. There's also a couple of classes that you could use to create a secondary and a contrast style. And then you can create an outline by using the outline variant. Contrast that with how you do buttons in something like Tailwind CSS, which makes you add an insane amount of classes for even something as simple as a basic button. In terms of layout, you have two different classes, a container class, which gives you a center viewport, and then a container fluid class, which gives you a 100% layout. It also uses the same breakpoints and viewports as Bootstrap. In addition to that, there is a grid class and that allows you to have a series of items next to each other by just using a div with a class of grid and then putting a series of items in there. If you add a figure as a wrapper container, you can make any content scroll horizontally. There is also a classless version of the framework. And in that case, you use the header, main and footer tags and they'll act as a container to define a centered viewport. For that, you're gonna need to load a slightly different version of the framework. You can redefine some of the CSS variables. And that way you can customize any of the variables that come with the framework. There's also a SAS version of the library where you can customize the variables and create a customized version of Pico. All right, so let's see what it's like to put together a project with this framework. I've got a basic page over here on the right hand side and you can see that I have regular navigation tags with a list and then I have couple of different sections here, a section for some information about myself, then some courses. And then at the bottom, I have this social media type section. You can see that it's put together pretty plainly. So the first thing I need to do is install the framework. To do that, I'll go to docs and I'll copy the code for this CDN right here. And I'm using a code swing, which means that I can just install the library by going to my command palette and adding the library. This is gonna go in a style sheet and here's the CSS that I need to put in. And you can see that immediately, it's going to look a lot better. Let's go ahead and close this other side so that we have a little bit more room to work with. And you can see that in CodeSwing, I can use my CSS along with my HTML on this side. I'll be working just with the HTML for the most part, so I'll make that a lot smaller on this side. Now notice a little bit of a problem with the background color that it's picking. And I think this has to do with the way that CodeSwing is normalizing my HTML. I saw the same thing when I tried this on CodePen. And so if you are normalizing, you have to get rid of any normalized base styles that you're using. So I'm gonna start off by defining in my HTML that I want to do for the most part, the data theme that is light for this page. So most of the background will go to this light background. I can do that on a piece by piece basis. So for example, if I wanted to do that differently on a header section, I could just go ahead and add this data theme for a specific section. 
So I'm going to do that for my navigation, and then I'll make my CSS bring in an image. My little navigation could use a little bit higher contrast. So the way that you do that in this framework is by adding a contrast class. We could do that right here in each of these different anchor tags. I can put this in a container if I want them to have a little bit more room. And that follows the containers that you would see like in a bootstrap grid. There's also a container fluid. And in the case of the navigation, I want the navigation to go almost all the way to the edge with a little bit of room here. All right, let's work on our main section. And right now my main section has just a div right here. I'm going to actually switch it to a, a main class that's going to give me a little bit of a different spacing. And I'm also going to want this in a container class. And I need to come all the way down here and make that a main tag as well. I'm also going to put each of the things that are an ID right now and put them into sections instead of divs. And what that's doing is adding a lot more room in between the items that have a different ID. All right, if we scroll up into the section right here, you see that I have a div here with a couple of headlines. The way that Pico works, if you put these inside an H group, they are spaced a little bit differently. So you can see that the main headline is still big and the second one gets to be like a sub headline. The spacing is a lot better and you can see this already done in some of these other places. And it's a good way to make that look pretty good. One of the things that I love about this framework is how the grid class works. So we have this courses section, and we want to put these items in a grid. So all I need to do is add a container with a class of grid. And you can see that it'll fit all those items in that space with a little bit of room in between. Let's work on making some cards for this section right here. To do that, I'll go ahead and add the class of grid to this container. So now these are side by side. And if you take these containers that right now are divs and you switch them to be articles, it's going to create a card layout for you. If I want to convert the links down here to buttons, all I have to do is change the role of the links to buttons. The goal here is not to avoid using any CSS but to use only the CSS that we need. Let's go ahead and improve on this by adding styles that will help us center our content. So I'm gonna center the about courses and follow IDs. And I'll just do a text align center here. So that's gonna make all of these different layouts center, which I think looks a little bit better. 